we're having a nice night out. Um, but it's my privilege to um, introduce Sue Elson. So Sue is an experienced trainer, professional learner, consultant in practice, and the author of three books on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn careers and business and hyper local marketing, which she's got here today to show examples of. Uh, she's been providing career support to newcomers, skilled professionals, and executives since 2001, and is an independent LinkedIn specialist. Should put my glasses on. Um, she's the founder and director of Newcomers Network, Camberwell Network, and 120 Ways Publishing, and is based in Melbourne, Australia. So her next book, um, Gigsters, which will be published in 2019, uh, will be focused on employers, experts, and entrepreneurs, how they can flourish in the gig economy. So take it away, Sue. Lovely. Thank you, Trudy. And thank you for joining this session. Um, thank you to NADCAS for um, organising me to be this afternoon so I could fly in this morning and fly out tonight. Mm -hmm. And I don't know which direction I'm supposed to stand in, so I'm, I guess I'll just go round and round in loops um, as we do this, because I'm, I mean, I do a lot of teaching, um, but I don't normally stand in the middle of the room, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very new experience for me. Um, so first of all, I really want to make sure this presentation is as relevant for you as possible. So can I just have a quick show of hands, how many of you work full time at the moment? Right. Oh, I'm going to challenge you. <laughs> All right. Um, so I also want to preface this presentation with the idea that I want you to think about this not just for university students, but also for yourself. Because uh, the world of work is changing for all of us, not just um, the students that you might be representing. Um, that's the information that is on the handout. And these slides are designed not for you, to, for me to say everything that's on them, but for you to get a copy of them so you can click on the links and get further information. Because I'm a learning junkie and I love learning information and I also love sharing information. So the maximum way I can do that is if I give you links to more stuff um, and just focus on, on some of the content as we go through. In fact, I have a really hard time trying to decide what not to tell you. And, uh, you know, that's the benefit of writing 80,000 word books, you know, I get to choose. Um, so, yeah, this, this is what I'm going to be covering. Just so that you know, I spent 11 years as an employee uh, with Westpac in Adelaide before I moved to Melbourne. And I haven't had a real job ever since. Um, so, for many of you, that's going to be, oh my goodness, you know, how does she survive? How does she eat? Um, and I'm really good at budgeting, I can tell you that. Um, and I, I, I'm almost a creative. But I'm also an expert and entrepreneur, so I end up having lots of different hats that I wear, and I really enjoy the variety. And one of the things that's been a really big component of my working life is my voluntary work. And there's not too many people who can say that they spent two weeks on Sydney Harbour taking scouts out sailing. And I'm the only person who didn't capsize, you know. <laughs> and I didn't win the beer competition. They said because I didn't take the kids out on this other boat, I'll, I couldn't win the beer. So, uh, but anyway, you know, I've had these amazing opportunities through doing voluntary work. And this is something that I really encourage new arrivals to Australia. Because anybody who lives and works in Australia knows we all do something voluntary. Uh, but a lot of new arrivals don't know that. It's a really great way to get work. So I'm going to touch on some of the issues which have obviously already been discussed at this conference. And I'm not going to talk about numbers because, you know, which numbers do you draw on? You know, any statistic can do it. But I just want to just sort of say these are the issues that are affecting um, the way the world of work is changing. And I really see a lot of things have changed, you know, in the 20 years of even me doing the casual work. And I'm going to emphasise particular components of this as I go through these slides. Um, and if you want to read my article on um, jobs of the future, um, you're definitely welcome to check that out. So one of the things that a lot of people I work with have difficulty with is trying to decide what on earth they're going to do. And I like to help people find out what their values are rather than their purpose. And the reason I prefer it is because purpose to me is like a destination. And if you don't have this destination that you've decided to go on and you don't get there, life can feel very difficult for a lot of people. So I prefer people to have sort of this decision-making framework that's determined by their values. And I encourage people to work out what those are. Um, to preface that, I spent three years reading books to try and find out what I wanted to do with my life. And that was the article, The How to Choose the Next Job or Career. So if you want to see my little model on that, um, you're welcome to check that out. But I also believe it's important, it's all well and good to decide, well, this is what I want to be. But 
but is it realistic? I mean, if you live in remote outback Australia and you want to be the data scientist for the government department, you know, that could be a little bit challenging um, unless you can work remotely. So you definitely need to think about your context and you also need to have um, an official identity. So, for instance, um, when I was Sue Everything, I didn't get any work. But when I became Sue Elson Independent LinkedIn Specialist, people would start remembering, oh, that's what Sue does, and then I would get work. So that hasn't stopped me from teaching, from getting other clients, from doing social media training, from building websites, from marketing businesses. It hasn't stopped me from doing any of those things, but what it has done is given me a label that people remember me by. And if I decide I don't want to be a LinkedIn specialist anymore, I want to be an author, which is the direction I'm heading in, then I just change my label, and then people remember me as the author. So, so that's how people can remember. And you can rely on your strengths, even your weaknesses. I'm a bit sensitive, so you know sometimes that makes me a really good teacher. Um, other times I have to go home and say I need to cool off for a while. Um, but yeah, they're, they're different choices. And the other thing that's really important in the online world where you're going to have your information found is your keywords. So one of the examples that I use in my website courses, there's a guy running a music school. So he wanted people to come and use his music school. So if you're learning how to play music, what would you put into Google? You want to learn how to play music? Music teacher, piano classes, you know, guitar lessons nothing whatsoever to do with music school. So you have to be thinking all the time what other words you are going to be found for. So if your students don't put the words the industry is using, you're not going to be found. So when I was at the CDA conference in Adelaide a few years ago, I went looking on LinkedIn for somebody who the public would call a career counsellor. And not one member of the CDAA came up in the LinkedIn search results and I was connected to a lot of those people in Adelaide because they all called themselves career development practitioners which is not the label that the public was using for it. Now of course I can do it and they do turn up because they have this concept of keywords. So you've always got to be thinking what can you be found for and you need to have those words as part of your content. I also like to think that from time to time you're going to have to reflect and review, both as a student or as an individual yourself. And I like to think of life as not like a box of chocolates, but a box of projects. So you might, most of you are in full-time roles now, but you're probably also parents, and you're probably also involved in an activity, and you're probably also volunteering, and there's all these different things. And Michael Looney states it beautifully when he says, you should be your own kind of peculiar. And I love that expression. I wish there were more people who were peculiar in their own way. They're so much more interesting and I'm much more likely to remember them. And also, there's a lot of people who are moving beyond a career to a lifestyle. So the biggest people who are requesting part-time work are not parents and not people leaving the workforce. They're young people who want to go surfing three days a week and only want to work four days a week. So don't assume that you know everybody wants to work full time. There's actually a lot of people who are looking for lifestyle at all ages um, of the spectrum. In turn, this is one statistic I decided I would bring out because well, some people call it soft skills. I like to call it behavioral skills and life skills and resilience is one of them. I've lost count of how many times I've applied for something and missed out, put in submissions, missed out, been retrenched, uh, been made redundant, uh, lost contracts, had contracts delayed. It has happened so many times in my life. And then I get some executive who's got a huge payout and says, oh, you know, I, I'm not gonna have a job and I've been there for 15 years. And I'm thinking, well, so? You've got heaps of money, right. you know, like you're better off than I am. Um, and so, you know, this concept of resilience um, really needs to begin very early on. And my son um, left school before the end of year 10, when he was 15, because he also repeated a year at school. Now, I have never met anyone, and I didn't do, do this for him. He managed to secure 10 interviews in one week. Now, you tell me any candidate you've met who's been able to secure 10 interviews in one week. And I'm telling you now, not all the jobs were great. You know, some of them were sales commissions and so on. And some of them are, you know, three bus rides away to get there. 
but he managed to secure 10 interviews in one week. So the skills to get a job are different to the skills to do a job, and he definitely has those skills to get work. And he's, the longest he's been unemployed is three months. And he's basically completely unskilled, you know, apart from the work experience he's had. So a lot of this is based on cultural and family issues. So with migrants, a lot of them don't understand these types of concepts, so I have to explain it. And I um, did well at school and then went straight to the bank and I was a career recruit and then I started a part-time degree, which I did my correspondence. But I spent my entire 20s, Shari would be pleased to hear this, reading personal development books, you know, like what's the meaning of life kind of stuff, you know. So I took that upon myself to learn those skills. And unfortunately, a lot of that stuff is not included in our education. And I wouldn't be able to do this lifestyle if I hadn't had that type of education. And I think it's going to be even more important um, in the future. So I looked up, because I had this concept around risk management, and the US Department of Defense has these four principles about risk management. And when I apply them to the concept of work, in the future, we have to accept risk when the benefits outweigh the cost. So if you take on some sort of gig job and you're only being paid $10 an hour as a student, who cares? You meet people, you get experience. Like, that's a segue. That's an opportunity uh, that people need to consider. You shouldn't accept any unnecessary risk, but if you apply for an app and there's 20 people on it, what's your chances of getting any work? Probably not much. So skip that app, you know? Think about what options are there. And participate and manage in planning. I heard the other day that if I just applied for a job, I probably would have got it because nobody else was game enough to apply for the job because the skills list was so long. So, you know, don't wait for your students to say, well, they've got to have all those skills on the list. Tell them to apply anyway. What's the worst that can happen? They don't get it. Um, so definitely do that. And also make decisions at the right level. So you have to be willing um, to exit. And uh, my son, you know, like he's a young person, and he left because he wasn't busy enough. Now you might say, aren't all the young people lazy? They all just don't want to do anything? Well, he left because it wasn't busy enough and he knew that about himself. So I think the new world of work, you might even have to be willing to exit and share that responsibility and accountability for yourself. Unfortunately, you also, in the new world of work, have to be prepared for a loss of privacy. Every time I apply for a job or go for some gig, I have to give them my tax file number, my date of birth, photocopy of my driver's license. There's all these databases all over Australia that have a photocopy of my driver's license on it. You know, and I'm thinking, why do they need this? I'm just applying for something. But you know, you do have to be prepared for this. And particularly some of the older clients I work with, they get really hung up on the whole concept of why should I have to put that on LinkedIn? Why do I have to tell that story? So, you know, this is an aspect of the new world of work that I don't really like. And also, if I show you my list of passwords, I have like 10 worksheets in an Excel spreadsheet, and the first one has, uh, I think, 158 entries on it. Like, it's an unbelievable number of passwords that I have. So, I don't use a program that is attached to a device. I use Excel and Password Protected, and I just keep adding to this list and it just is enormous, I mean, seriously, you know? Like, in this deep world, you end up with millions of passwords. And multiple apps. Now, I love Weeploy. Have any of you heard of Weeploy? It's a Melbourne-based app, and it's like Uber for jobs. And I wanted to make sure it works, so I went through the assessment process. So basically, I can get a temporary job uh, without an interview. So I've gone through an online assessment process. I completely thought I'd failed it, but apparently I passed it, so that was good. Um, and you get paid award rates, you get super, and they're interested in you. So WePoy as an app is, is amazing as far as, you know, and I've tested it myself. Another one is Found, which does a lot of contracts with the government. And Sidekicker I haven't had any direct dealings with, but I, you know, on the grapevine, people have said they've tried it. But there are also other apps that are niche specific for particular industries. So some of your graduates might need to find out those. But be prepared, they're gonna have assessments, they're gonna have onboarding processes, there's gonna be forms to fill in, you know, there's gonna be this whole schmozzle of things that you'll have to do 
um, as well as part of that, you know, in this, this sort of world. So if you're thinking about consulting, and there's a few private practitioners in the room, um, a website that works is really important, and heaps of people make lots of mistakes when they get a sort of their first website, so please consider uh, reading that article so you don't lose money and, and have headaches. Um, you need to have social media and apps that are aligned with the career you're looking for and build up your digital footprint. Google Plus is being wiped out, but whilst it's still there, punch in all the details of everywhere you are online. I did a presentation last week to Monash University early career researchers, so you know they need to be able to pull their academic content up. Um, so you know these sorts of things are important. There's a social media report from Census, which is absolutely amazing reading if you want to understand about social media use in Australia. And I'm now verified on Google, so I've got a little blue tick, just like Donald Trump's got a blue tick on Twitter. You can't get a blue tick on Twitter anymore, they've turned that functionality off, but, but I am verified on Google, a verified author. There's all these extra technical competencies that can help you. Now, most uh, people who know me in the room know that LinkedIn is my favourite social media app. I'm member number 77832, joining on the 21st of December, 2003. I'm not paid by LinkedIn, by the way. Um, but I'm going to give a little exercise later. So if you've got the LinkedIn app on your phone, uh, be ready to open that and turn on Bluetooth on your phone. And I'll show you a quick thing that you can use. Um, but also, if you want to know more about the benefits of LinkedIn, you're trying to convince students about it, first one. The second one is if you've got colleagues and you need to convince them to use LinkedIn is the second article. And the third one is why you should have a good LinkedIn profile and a couple of ways to update your profile. I've done heaps of presentations, so just pick one, watch the video, check out the handout um, and then you can do that yourself. But in terms of where you should be at with LinkedIn, you definitely need to update your own LinkedIn URL and your headline with your keywords in it. Beautiful photographs, smiling with your teeth showing, Pop in some videos to demonstrate your digital competency. Make sure you've got an all-star profile because it's got as many sections completed and connect and maintain your relationships, give and receive recommendations, engage with the news feed, write posts if you want to or curate them or create articles, monitor your stats and review all of that every six months and use it as a research tool to meet people in person. So those extra articles talk more about you know, how you can use LinkedIn if you really want to be but the other thing is lifestyle and you know one of the things that's changing about the nature of work is making sure you're aligned so a lot of, uh, one of my clients had been working overseas and he worked for this amazing entrepreneur and he had all these fantastic development opportunities and he arrived in Australia with his family and he says I can't do that anymore I need to do something else and it was a really interesting experience because he came to me for some LinkedIn advice, but then I ended up telling him, you need to decide what you want to do first before you know we do the LinkedIn thing. And he says, oh, but I don't have enough money and you know, I'm really worried. Well, anyway, he went home and he thought about it and then he realized he actually had enough money to last quite a long time. If he changed what he valued and put a priority on settling his family, you know, making them happy, doing what he loved, not being so stressed, not having to pay for all the extra things you need when you're so busy at work. And so when he had that values alignment, he was able to adjust his whole concept of what meaningful work meant. And he was able to, you know, manage his money better and so on. So I think that's a really important component as to what the options are for people now. If you can manage your money well, um, I did another writer's symposium and a guy there who's been producing films and been involved in the theatre for many years, he gets asked by people all the time, what's the one tip you can give me to be an artist in Australia? And he said, every time you get paid, bank the money. That's, what he, that's his number one tip for every artist. But what happens is an artist gets the money, blows the lot, and then destitute again. So his tip was, bank the money. And so, you know, this concept of money mastery um, I'm very grateful for Scott Pape for producing his books and I hope my next book does for careers what Scott Pape has done for budgeting. You know, he's made it sexy at long last. Um, so yeah, really good. Um, being involved in your community definitely gives you a sense of who you are and I believe that you should have three networks, 
and multiple ways to attract value into your life. You definitely need to be persistent. And one of the amazing people that I work with is a guy who's been in recruitment for many years and he can't retire. Every time he tries, he keeps going back because he just can't stand not having something to do and something meaningful to do. So I really want you to keep thinking about how can you continually challenge yourself throughout your lifetime. Don't think of retirement as stopping, just think what will my next challenge be. And as I was saying to Trudy, you know, I, I want to write, I'm my fifth book's about poetry, the next thing is to write songs and play music, you know, I'm always thinking of the next thing that, that I can add in my life. Now those articles, Tough Love for the Unemployed, um, they're not negative, they're actually positive articles. So if you know someone in those age brackets, um, you know, don't think of it as a judgement, just say, oh, Sue wrote this, wrote this, you know, I've read it, it's interesting. Don't tell them, you know, it's, it's something negative, it's, it's definitely something positive. So, um, another video that I shared in the CDAA uh, Victorian Division Facebook group was this amazing video put out by somebody who did a talk and said that we shouldn't be defined by our role, but by who we can become in our role. And I thought that was a really great way to describe um, what sort of work we can do in the future. And there was another research project that looked at, are you allowed to be your real self when you come to work? And in some situations you can be, and in other situations you can't be. So I definitely think you should bring your whole person to your life, but you might have to sort of, you know, pretend certain things in certain environments. We all know politics and, you know, they're not necessarily the whole person at work, but, you know, hopefully we'll move to that at some point. Um, I was running a course yesterday on creating a simple WordPress website and Tony was in the class and Tony has uh, books written by his wife that he's trying to promote that are at least five years old. This is a tough gig, you know, it's pretty hard to promote books that are already five years old. And one of the things he said, and it really struck me, was in the past we had control over everything and now we don't. And you used to be able to buy something and keep it. And now we buy something, we're just renting it, we're borrowing it, you know? Like you download a movie, you're only renting it for, for hours. So the way I see the world changing is we're gonna to have to be much more adaptable and we're gonna be much more interested <coughs> not in possessions, but in experiences. And you're already seeing these people, you know, they wanna go surfing, they wanna do this, they wanna do that. So I think there's gonna be a trend to more people wanting experiences. I also think those decisions will be made to made on values, but also the way we get value is a value exchange. So we might not be paid for hours of work, but we might be paid $500 to do something. It might only take us 10 minutes if we've got you know, amazing expertise, but the value that brings is what we'll be paid for. I think that's a, a, a completely different way of thinking about our world of work. But what is absolutely important is continuous learning. Um, I attend between one and four events every week and I'm constantly reading new information and I think that that's the only way to survive um, in the world that we're now in. And my favourite quote of all time is, occupation is the necessary basis of all enjoyment and it's, you know, that's just one that really, really resonates with me. So, my, my fourth book is called Geeksters and I've broken people up into categories um, to help people understand where they might be at in terms of, you know, on the scale. A bit like a Myers Briggs for careers. And these are not def definite definitions, they're just sort of guidelines to help people understand where they could be. So if you're an employee, you can just come in and just do something temporary and fly out again. Or you could come in and actually be really proactive and be uh, an entrepreneur. Or you could just say, look, I'm here to work and I'm saving for my house and I'm just going to come in here and you know, I don't care what the job is, I'm just going to do it. Or you could be principal and say, look, I've got three kids and a mortgage and you know, I've got to pay the bills, so that's why I'm an employee. So it just gives people a bit of a framework to think about. There's no, no problem. Be an employee for a while. You know, be an entrepreneur later if you want to. If you're an expert, the master magician is really cool because they just know how to do everything and you bring them in and it happens, you know. I really love the concept of the master magician. And then there's the fabulous freelancer who, I don't know, they do it and it just sort of happens and they can do all these different things. 
the nimble nomad, there's a lot more people who want to be on the road and travelling and doing different things. And the suave specialist who says, no, I do that, I don't do this, I do that, you know, and they've just decided these are the specialties I'm going to go with. Entrepreneurs, Barry, he told me, Sue, I'm unemployable. Mm -hmm. Okay, Barry, why is that? I don't cope with bullshit. So, you know, that was his motto and he said, nobody's going to employ me and he's quite unashamed about that. What's wrong with that? You know, it's fantastic that he's willing to be an entrepreneur because there's lots of people who don't want to do that. So, I, I really like that idea. There's also the serial starter. You know, the person who says, oh, this week I'm going to do this and it's going to be amazing. And then they finish that and then they're on to the next thing and then they're on to the next thing, you know. And there's personalities out there like that. And there's a lot more people who've got a side shuffle, you know, that they do in conjunction with some of these other things. And another really inspirational one is the person who's a, a conscious crusader, you know, they've decided that they're going to change the world. And I'm hoping my fourth book changes the world and gets people to read to one another. Because um, it's called Poems for Lovers to Read to Each Other. So I'm going to try and get adults reading. So, you know, there's so if you think about it, you know, I've actually been lots of these different things at different times, but I just want to help people have a sense that there's all these options for careers rather than just a task or a job or, you know, you have to do this. You can actually be a combination of any of these and you can have all these as, as projects and possibilities um, in your life. So, um, I'm more than happy for these slides. I've done an audio recording, I'm doing a video recording. This will all be accessible to you on the suewelson.org website. But I did promise you I'd show you a quick LinkedIn tip. So now it's time for you to open your LinkedIn app. And this is a really good technique for you to use if you're going to be a presenter at a workshop.